The Benin bronzes on show for the last time in France. Vivian Meyer's photography emerges from the darkroom and a robotic cartoon hero celebrated here in Paris. That's all coming up on today's show. Rare treasures from Benin are currently on display at the Quai Branly Museum in Paris before they return to the former kingdom of Dalmi. Statues, thrones and ceremonial hatchets from West Africa were among the royal artefacts looted during the colonial wars in the 19th century. After this show in Paris, the objects will make their way to Benin. Julien Sauvage and Claire Rush have this report. Placing it just right, this team from the Quai Branly Museum installs the throne of King Gezo, the grandfather of the last king of Dahomey. It's one of 26 works of art, all royal treasures from Abomey, and handling them requires caution. Two specialists from Benin have been invited to help with the installations. Abdoulaye Imourou is one of them. He's the curator of the royal palaces of Abomey. It is very emotional to see these objects. They are well preserved. And they will be coming back to us soon. For years, the exhibition of these works was controversial, prompting French President Emmanuel Macron in 2017 to promise their return to Benin. Now that promise is set to come true. In France, since 1892, these works will now be displayed for the last time in Paris before being given back to Benin. We're starting to work differently with our African colleagues. It's time to consolidate all this information and transfer our knowledge of these works and their history over the past century. I see it as a moment that brings us together and that will allow us to share this history. With an attentive eye, Calix de Bia, curator at the Ouida Museum of History in Benin, observes photographs and documents each step of the installation. Installing the objects is a very delicate operation. We must consider how to present them in a technical manner. After the Benin Cultural Week, we'll take them down and package them. Once they're returned to our country, we'll display them in another exposition. That exhibition will be held firstly in Cotonou, then in Ouida, the Beninese port from which the works left for France nearly 130 years ago. But only when the museum's construction is completed in 2024 will the artworks return to their original home in Abomey. Well, she spent much of her time making era-defining images, and yet it wasn't even her job. Vivian Meyer was one of the greatest photographers of her generation, capturing life on the streets of New York and Chicago in the 1950s, 60s and 70s. The Musée de Luxembourg in Paris is now hosting an exhibition of some of that previously unknown work. Wassim Corney has more. From 1950 to 1990, Vivian Meyer was a nanny working for families in New York and Chicago. But on top of her day job, she took pictures lots of pictures, 150,000 over the course of half a century. But they were never published or showcased. Vivian Meyer just stored them in dozens of boxes, a treasure that was uncovered by John Malouf, who bought these boxes filled with film at an auction. I have 700 rolls of undeveloped color film, 2,000 undeveloped rolls of black and white film. And he decided the world needed to see them. It was more than I can handle myself. So I thought, let's see what the museums will do to help me. Maybe I could get this into MoMA. Maybe I could get this into Tate Modern. And the museums loved it. Vivian Meyer's pictures are now showcased across the globe. 
the work of a woman with an incredible gift, which she used to tell the stories found on America's streets. Vivian Mayer was a person who was invisible. She wasn't living the American dream. She belonged to the country's darker side. And I think photography was her way of existing, of building a relationship with the world around her. Was there some kookiness? Probably some kookiness, yes, and some quirkiness, too. And although no one was able to see Myra's work when she was alive, today experts believe she is one of the greatest photographers in history. Vivian Meyer continued taking pictures of the small details in her life, her city and her country until she died, and the mystery of why she never showed them to anyone lives on. Next, to a publication that defies simple categorization, it's a travelogue, anthropological study and visual diary about life in Polynesia. Artist and sailor Tituan Lamazu worked with his journalist daughter Zoe on the book Stopover in Polynesia. It brings together text, sketches and interviews to build up a picture of the archipelago. Tituan Lamazu is known for winning the first Bondi Globe in 1990 a solo, non-stop, around-the-world yacht race. But he's also an accomplished artist who trained at the Beaux-Arts. It's thanks to his love of sailing that he discovered Polynesia, where he spent more than 40 years. It was aboard Eric Tabarly's Pendwick 6. I was a young teammate, very young, in 1977. At the time, my mind was filled with all the usual cliches about these parts of the world, especially Polynesia, as a paradise on Earth. Eden. The lagoons, the white sandy beaches, the crystalline waters. For the past 250 years, Polynesia's natural beauty has been an inexhaustible source of inspiration for many writers and painters. Tituan is no exception. However, it's not this postcard version of Polynesia that he and his daughter want readers to discover in their new book. Polynesia's thousand-year history is complex, an experience of colonization, an experience of ancestral memory awakening in the 1970s. Now it's a territory grappling with very concrete global issues such as climate change, loss of biodiversity and overfishing. Zoe also knows the islands well. She lived there with her mother when she was a child. When Tituan asked me to participate in this project, I hadn't been to Polynesia in 30 years. So I rediscovered the islands of my childhood. Their roles are well defined. Zoe conducts interviews while her father paints their portraits, portraying the inner life of the islands and its inhabitants. There's just us two, four hands to try to show all these multiple facets, with different drawings which more or less resemble the people, the environment, their voice, but also what we perceive, which is sometimes invisible. In addition to the book, the Museum of Tahiti and its islands will host an exhibition of Tituan's Polynesian works in November. Next, he's a beloved icon of many childhoods here in France, a giant Japanese robot often traveling across the universe at the speed of light to save mankind. The cartoon Goldorak was invented by the mangaka Go Nagai and it's still as popular as ever. Now a new comic strip imagined by five artists brings the intergalactic hero to a new generation. Catherine Viette and Renaud Lefort have more. Oh, I feel so right. Super. It's been nearly half a century since this cult cartoon was first broadcast on French television. Not a single wrinkle for Grandizer, a steel giant piloted by Duke Fleed to save the Earth from the clutches of the evil King Vega. The cartoon hero's popularity took some parents by surprise. The warrior robot adored by the French was created by Go Nagai. It brings back fond childhood memories for these fans. Robots as tall as buildings, 
carrying little children inside. And we were imagining those kids to be us. It's the arrival of a new Asian culture, manga culture in France, whose popularity exploded. Now the new and perhaps final episode of the Grandizer saga is out in France, created by five French big names in graphic novels. First challenge, getting the colors of the armor just right. Grindizer is not just red, it's yellow, red, blue, white. We're sure of the colors. It's almost Mondrian. It's extremely distinct, extremely clear. It's brilliant because you can recognize it immediately, and at the same time, it's a complex process if you want to use more realistic colors. And to match with the times among the bright pages of the new comic, there's more space for female characters. The Hikiru character becomes a spaceship pilot and she sets out to save Grendizer. Then there's Maria Fleed. She's stronger than Koji and maybe even stronger than Duke Fleed. She saves everyone. The story's message has also been updated, showing the people of Vega in a more positive light. All the authors who worked on this series knew that at the time they had a somewhat embarrassing fascination with the violence. As kids, they liked the idea of solving problems with their fists. As adults, they know there are other ways. Also, regarding the migrants, sending them back where they came from isn't the only solution. It's better to find out their stories and find a way to help them. If these 136 pages have left you wanting more, the House of Japanese Culture in Paris is hosting a Grandizer exhibition. In the words of fans, long live Grandizer, the Space Prince. Finally, to a fashion that very few of us have escaped over the years, denim. Jeans are the subject of an exhibition here in Paris, which takes a playful look at how the fabric has expressed cultural and social attitudes. It's also a chance to delve into the techniques and production methods which have shaped this internationally embraced textile. That's at the Cité des Sciences. We'll leave you with a look. Do remember to check out our website for more arts and culture. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this.